Oh, I apologise, but we're not using this one. I don't know if you can actually see in there. We've had a bit of um, catastrophe today. I tried to um, run it up to show somebody on YouTube uh, and on the Teak forum the kind of output from one of these. So the thing went bang. I'm going to be fed up with these things. I'm a bit disheartened. Here's a bit better shot of what happened. Luckily, I've not damaged. It's not damaged anything. I was just coming down off the test. Sorry to disappoint anybody. I'm probably not going to go that way. Although I will do the cog to show you the cog system work. Good morning. Right and early on a Saturday morning for me. This. I decided to have the day off. We're going to build a new jig today. Not in place of the other one, as well as, and we're going to cut those out. There's three of them. They will all stick together, and they will form the new centre of our new motor. Another little tip, workshop's best friend, double sided sticky tape, like you use on the carpets, stick the two woods together so you can make your first holes perfect. Another little tip, so you can get your material in and out properly, your wheels or whatever you're building, just take the corners off. Now we've got them to screw, to get, to screw together, we can now cut that template out Go on there and drill all the holes. Right, that's our little jig all made up. You'll also require for this jig a little pin. I say a little pin, that's a 10mm round piece of bar. Again, off cut from a piece I bought from the local DIY store. You know the one with the big orange logo in the UK. So when you drill one hole, you move it round, put that in, shove it all the way through, you can drill your second hole. So we'll cut us timber, we'll drill all these first, and then we'll make it into a round shape. Otherwise, uh, we're going to get breakout. So the first thing is to cut these blocks, as you can see here, 50mm square out of my usual timber. That's my three blocks cut. Right, cut our labels out, stick on, punch the holes. Um, I'm only going to punch the centre hole in these because the jig will do the rest of the work. little crucial thing, don't round these off first, drill the holes first, otherwise you're going to end up with lots of breakout. So we're going to drill the holes, all the holes first. And as you can see, that goes in there and turns completely around because the jig was built for it. Of course, if you've got one of these little devices, you can just put it in the corner, like so, and do providing your blocks are perfectly square, which mine are, and there's your centre. I'm going to do this one using the template, and the other two, I'm just going to drill the holes out of and then let the jig do it. But just to show a point, I'm going to do it with that first. Right, the first one, of course, line your timber up. This is your face edge, so this is the edge you're lining it up to. I don't know if you can actually see through there, but they are perfectly in line. The first thing to do is to drill those three holes, the little ones. Now use the drill bit as a locator to drill those two. And of course, once you've drilled your first hole, you shove your 10mm dowel in. Could be wood if you want, I just have to have a piece of steel, so that's what I use. It is better actually to use steel. That will obviously go all the way through, so it won't interfere with the drill. You then drill your second one, pull that out, pull that out, turn around to the second one. Right, as you can see, I've drilled one hole, shoved my dowel in, and now I'm going to drill the other one. And there's number two hole drilled. Now just pull them out, swing this block round so that hole in this block becomes there when we start again. Right, and what you should end up when you took it out of the jig is that. Don't try to get away without using this peg, and the reason why is the wall in between there is very thin. When you're drilling so close like that, it'll break out. The reason why it doesn't break out in the first place, of course, is because it's got the other piece of timber at the side of it. It's only when you drill the second hole so close that you get the breakout problem. Hence the reason that you shove that in to stop the breakout problem. There you are, my block all drilled as you can see all the way through and there's the other one behind it so you can see 
they're exactly the same. These here aren't wasted, these are actually to shove little bits down through uh, glue when we glue them to lock them all together while the glue's going off while we compress them together. So these are also a part of the build. Right, as we can see, all drilled, all three. Perfect alignment. Now let's go on the next bit and round them off. Just for the skeptics, as you can see, if you've got them aligned perfectly, you can take that one off, flip it over, put it underneath, and reline it back up. And if you do that, you can also line them up like that. If you find these are uh, binding a little too much for you, get a candle. You will need to sand this off after, of course, because we need to glue them together. But just like a so. You can do the same in there if you want. If you can get your candle in, I can't. And you'll find that they'll turn much easier. Something a little different this time. I've used the peg, so we can do. That's the peg we use for there. Just drill 10 mil, 10 mil in there. You can put a nut and bottom wash on that if you want. I sometimes do. This time I've put a stop because. We don't want to be going silly on this and it's not going to do itself, we've got to do it manually, we've got to make sure we stop. So I've chosen the lowest point to put my stopper. Now you can actually see it's not quite in line, but it will be when they're all correct. So at the moment I just do that and just keep moving it until I hit this all the way round and I know it's done. Then what you should end up with, sorry I've got my mask on still, <laughs> then what you should end up with is that. I think you will agree. It's pretty good, no massive breakout on it. As we can see, all three done. Now I'm going to get on and glue them all together. Remember, if you use candle wax, you're going to have to sand that off. On all sides before you can glue it on all your blocks. I'm going to drive that through all the three when I've aligned them all up to hold them into place, block on each side, clamp away. I do own the copyrights for this by the way. <laughs> Daft man, any circle design. Attachment for your sander coming out in February. <laughs> Looks like it broke. No doubt somebody will be making them in, and selling them at some DIY store. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put glue in the middle like so of each one of them like that and then shove and then shove them together and use the bolt the bars clamp it that's it all clamped down and let that dry before I start sanding anything and I'm just going to knock all the dowels all the way through. all three dowels all the way through very tight Right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put that in the drill bit, but we're not going to clamp the end of these threads in the chuck, because if you do, you'll naff them up. Use a connector, is what I use, with a spare piece of rod with a locking nut on. We then get a bit of sandpaper. Don't clamp hard, just nice and steady. As you can see, it makes that really nice and smooth. Now we'll take our file like so and sand them all together so they're all in a straight line this is just an old metal ruler out of one of those adjustable um, squares and with some sandpaper on it just do that on all edges all the way around and we'll come back just mark where you start <laughs> otherwise you'll be going around forever now that's done we can now sand them out like so and we're going to take the bar out now it's dry and we're going to round the edges of them off because that's where wire's got to go. 